damn you for a stupid slut. That's for what you made me. Mother and daughter are slapping each other. Daughter Charlotte is subdominant because she's the most glamorous prostitute in London right now. And it was her mother, Margaret, who made her that way. Money is a woman's only power in this world. In 18th century London, prostitutes were popular. Everyone was in a state of pleasure and lust. Margaret ran a rudimentary brothel, but on this day, it was reported to the authorities. In court, the judge fined her 100 pounds. Margaret couldn't accept this and tried to explain that the girls were just her tenants. Then Charlotte arrived. Oh, sir, my mother yeah. protects her girls because the law does not. Yeah. She is the exemplar of all the boards in London. Charlotte's plea confirmed Margaret's illegal behavior. Now Margaret had no reason to avoid the fine. Well, Charlotte was supposed to be able to help her mother pay the fine. After all, Charlotte was the most brilliant harlot in all of London, and Sir Howard liked her. If she signed his contract, she would have money for the rest of her life, but Charlotte refused to sell her freedom. So Margaret had to look to her youngest daughter, Lucy. Sell her virginity. Margaret's brothel was in crisis. Emily, the top prostitute, sensed danger and turned to Golden Square. There's just something about this high glass brothel. Shakespeare is being talked about here, and they're singing and playing instruments. Emily was shocked by the high class atmosphere. Emily met the brothel's owner, Lydia Quigley, and began to sell herself. When Lydia found out her current owner was Margaret, she immediately took Emily in, because Lydia and Margaret have been enemies for years. In order to keep Margaret down, Lydia hired a nun to report Margaret for a huge fine. Margaret had planned to upgrade her brothel and rent a building in Soho to relocate. But when she was reported, not only was she unable to pay the fine, she had problems paying the rent. She had to sell the virginity of her youngest daughter, Lucy. Lucy has always been well protected by her. Margaret puts her through school, plays the piano, writes poetry, and gives her the persona of a gentle lady. Tonight she is holding a secret auction for Lucy at the theater. Be a Wells woman. Firm free. The prostitutes and brothels of 18th century London are mesmerizing. The young, naive girl makes her debut tonight. Her mother gave her a pair of shiny shoes. Do you like them? They don't fit. They make them. At night, the opera house is filled with celebrities and spectators. Lucy slowly makes her way to the stage to be scrutinized. But young Lucy is a little nervous about being out in the world. She wept at the opera's most emotional moments. Her mother, Margaret, reminded her to keep her emotions in check and to keep looking beautiful at all times. But someone had already found them. Tears work, you clever minx. Margaret had left for business. Lucy, however, is a little nervous. I'm not ready. It's not hard. You will learn to be the queen of pretend as I am. She's about to go down the same path her sister Charlotte did, but it was Charlotte's crazy fan who was the highest bidder for Lucy. Noble Sir Howard is not only devoted, he is also a jealous man. When he learns during the day that Charlotte has been flirting with someone else in his absence, he becomes jealous and decides to take revenge. We need the money. And take it. And so Lucy was taken away by Sir Howard. Her mother also found an angry Charlotte and blamed her for upsetting Sir Howard and tried to persuade her to sign a contract of sale. Money is a woman's only power in this world. Thank you, Ma, for all you've done for Lucy and for me. You never, ever sold us short. The status of women was very low in the society of that time. The nobles lived a life of luxury with their estates, lands and hereditary titles. But women, without the right to inherit, had to work hard to get a good man to make ends meet. Lucy, a naive and unsophisticated girl, entered the society, but she still has a long way to go if she wants to become a successful prostitute like her sister Charlotte. The two brothels are in business competition. Lydia, who runs a high-end brothel, can't stand the sight of a rival madam, so she bribes the nuns to shut down Margaret's brothel. Margaret is fined a lot of money and fights back when she finds out what's going on. She finds a prostitute who's retired from a high-end brothel. Mary was already seriously ill. Margaret then paid off another writer to publicize Lydia's vicious behavior. I'm impressed by how good 18th century public relations is. As soon as the article was published, the high and mighty who patronized Lydia's brothels left in droves. The clientele of high-end brothels disappeared overnight. How? Seeing as we've got no coals. On the other hand, Lucy received an invitation to the Baron's far-flung estate. She was greeted by the Baron and his wife. After bathing and dressing, they took Lucy on a hunting trip. Lucy, who had never killed before, was terrified. In her unfamiliar surroundings, she is more like a frightened deer. 
Not knowing which gun is being aimed at her, Lucy's nervousness and inhibitions were obvious to the Baron. He teased Lucy that she wasn't as interesting as Charlotte, at which point Lucy found the courage to say, Every shot he made was wonky. I shall call him Lord Wonky. <laughs> <laughs> Lucy's joke had humiliated him, and the night would leave her traumatized. From then on, Lucy's every social interaction was a failure. Margaret thought that the beautiful, naive Lucy would soon be adored by the upper crust of the aristocracy. However, She withdrew when I touched her. My apologies, Mrs. Wells. I, I feel your daughter is not for me. Margaret was overwhelmed by her daughters and her business. And without business, her rival, Lydia, was ready to strike back. Oh, deliciously vulgar. <laughs> 